As a priest of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, I am very saddened by contemporary events, uh, the things that are happening right now in 2022 with uh, the invasion and the war. We're seeing things on the news that we read and have been reading in the history books. And just when we think that these kinds of things have been stamped out and that we could learn from past history. Unfortunately, as a student of history myself, I can say we are often repeating these past mistakes. Now, in the midst of this, the country of Ukraine uh, has come to the forefront of people's attention, especially here in the West. And for us as Catholics, whenever we hear the word Ukraine, we cannot help but think about the Catholic Church over there. Now, what is the Catholic Church over there? Well, there are a number of different traditions, but the tradition that is, if you will, indigenous to the area is the Kievan Christian tradition that now in communion with the Roman Church is called the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Greek Catholic because it received its Christianity from the Greek missionaries, more specifically Cyril and Methodius, who took the gospel and the liturgical texts and translated them from the Greek into Church Slavonic in order to evangelize the Slavic people. So why are we here in the United States and all throughout the world? In the past 100 or 150 years, uh, various immigrants for economic or for reasons of war, have made their way over here, uh, just as all other people of Irish, Italian, German, Polish, Hungarian, Slovak, Lithuanian, Spanish stock, uh, have also made their way here. And they've settled here and had families, and they brought with them their religious traditions, and are now not only raising their own children, but raising people uh, raising spiritual children, welcoming people from all backgrounds, giving them the gift of the Christianity that they brought with them. Now, unfortunately, historically, we know that every time uh, these kinds of incursions or invasions have occurred uh, on the Ukrainian land, one of the very first victims has been the Catholic Church, more specifically, the Greek Catholic Church. The Greek Catholic Church has been made illegal uh, on a number of occasions there, most especially in the 20th century, in 1946, when in, under the Soviet Union, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church was forcibly assumed into the Russian Orthodox Church. All of our bishops were exiled to Siberia Many bishops and priests and lay people were martyred, and our church was the largest underground religious organization in the world until 1989 and the fall of communism, when our church reasserted itself, now numbering between four and five million people who have since then spread throughout the world. And we have gone from a handful of priests to thousands, over 700 seminarians now uh, in, in Ukraine alone, not counting those outside of the country. So in the midst of this news, our church is under threat again. Our bishops and our priests over there are staying put and staying faithful to serve the people, but there are over a million refugees already who've left the country. So as Catholics, how can we be concerned about them and how can we help? Well, the first thing that we can do is we can join them in the solidarity of prayer. God is in charge. God's providence will always prevail. And we must pray for our suffering brothers and sisters, as well as for the conversion of our enemies. We can also join in providing humanitarian aid. Many, many refugees are in need of basic human needs. Thirdly, we can educate ourselves. There are Eastern Catholics all throughout the world 
and many of them are right here in our backyards in the United States. And unfortunately, there are many Catholics who are simply unaware of who they are and of their traditions. Perhaps they look on them with suspicion or think that they are strange, not realizing that they are fully Catholic and that they have an ancient tradition which stretches back all the way to the apostles. And this is something that doesn't belong simply to one part of the world, as though to one ethnic group, just as one doesn't have to be Italian to appreciate the Roman Catholic Church. So this is a gift for the entire world. And the fate of our brothers and sisters who are suffering martyrdom should be of concern to everyone. Imagine tomorrow if Italy were invaded or Rome were invaded and all of a sudden the Vatican were bombed or Roman or Latin Catholicism were declared illegal. This would move Catholics around the world to respond with anger, but also with sadness and with prayer and with a desire and a drive to help. God has permitted this tragedy, but we now have a chance to stand up and do what is right in prayer, in humanitarian aid, and in education. And together, as Catholic brothers and sisters, we will conquer evil. And we will sing with our suffering brothers and sisters in Ukraine the Easter hymn, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling death by death, and to those in the tombs giving life.